Hello students, today let us take up the second lecture on secondary metabolites. In this lecture, I will be discussing about phenolic compounds and nitrogen and sulfur containing compounds. First, let us start with the second group of secondary metabolites that is the phenolic compounds. Plant phenolic compounds are a heterogeneous group of secondary metabolites and they are characterized by the presence of an aromatic ring with one or more hydroxyl group substituents. Some plant phenolics are water soluble carboxylic acids and glycosides and some are soluble only in organic solvents while some phenolics are insoluble polymers. Most plant phenolics are biosynthesized by the sycamic acid pathway. More than 8,000 phenolic compounds have been reported in plants and they are dispersed throughout the plant kingdom. The phenolic compounds play important roles in plants including defense against herbivores and pathogens, mechanical support and in reducing the growth of nearby competing plants. Plant phenolics include simple low molecular weight compounds with single aromatic ring as well as large and complex tannins and derived polyphenols. They are commonly found conjugated to sugars and organic acids in plants. Phenolics are classified based on the number and arrangements of their carbon atoms. The different groups of phenolic compounds are The first group are the simple phenolic compounds. Simple phenolics include simple low molecular weight compounds with single aromatic ring. Example, transcenamic acid which is a simple phenylpropane having a basic aromatic ring of 6 carbon and a chain of 3 carbon. Cumarins or phenylpropane lactones or cyclic esters containing an aromatic ring of 6 carbon and a chain of 3 carbon and benzoic acid derivatives having a basic aromatic ring of 6 carbon and a chain of 1 carbon etc. The simple phenolic compounds have important roles in plant defense as well as in inhibiting the growth of neighboring competing plants. Simple phenolic compounds such as caffeic acid and ferulic acid inhibit the germination and growth of their neighbors and such effects are commonly called allelopathy. The next are the complex phenolic compounds. The complex phenolic compounds comprise large and complex phenolic compounds as well as derived polyphenols. The complex phenolic compounds include lignin, flavonoids, tannins and non-flavonoids. First, let us take up lignin. Lignin is a highly branched polymer of phenylpropanoid groups. It is formed from three different alcohols namely coniferyl, cumeryl and cinapyl by oxidation catalyzed by the enzyme peroxidase to form free radicals or reactive oxygen species that reacts simultaneously and randomly to form lignin. Lignin is the most abundant organic substance in plants and is found mainly in the thickened secondary walls of supporting and conducting tissue cells, especially tracheids and vessels of xylem elements. They also occur in the primary wall and middle lamella. The mechanical rigidity of lignin provides strength to the stems and vascular tissues and the physical toughness blocks the growth of pathogens and also reduces the digestibility of the plants and herbivores and insects. They are also frequently produced in plants in response to infection or wounding by pathogens to block the spread of pathogens. The next group are the Flavonoids. Flavonoids are one of the largest classes of plant phenolics and they are widespread in the plant kingdom. They are present in high concentrations in the epidermis of leaves and the skin of fruits and have important roles in UV protection, pigmentation, stimulation of nitrogen fixing nodules and disease resistance. Flavonoids are polyphenolic compounds containing 15 carbon atoms organized into two aromatic rings connected by a three carbon bridge. The flavonoids are classified into different groups based on the degree of oxidation of the three carbon bridge as anthocyanins, the flavones, the flavonols, and the isoflavonoids. First, let us see anthocyanins. The anthocyanins are the most widespread group of pigmented flavonoids and are responsible for imparting the red pink, 
purple and blue colors to plant parts. The anthocyanins are glycosides that have sugars at position 3 and anthocyanins without their sugars are called anthocyanidins. The color of anthocyanin is influenced by the number of hydroxyl and methoxyl groups in ring B of the anthocyanidin, the presence of chelating metals such as iron and aluminum, the presence of flavone or flavonol copigments and the pH of the cell vacuole in which these components are stored. Anthocyanins play important role in attracting pollinators and seed dispersal by coloring flowers and fruits of plants. Next are the flavones and flavonols. Flavones and flavonols are structurally very closely related and five commonly occurring flavones and flavonols of plants are apigenin, luteolin, quercetin, camphorol and myricetin. Flavones such as luteolin and apigenin have a A and C ring substitution and are without oxygenation at third carbon while many flavones have substitutions including hydroxylation, methylation, O and C alkylation and glycosylation and most flavones commonly occur as 7O glycosides. Flavones and flavonols are mostly found in flowers but are also present in the leaves of all green plants. Unlike the anthocyanins, they generally absorb light at shorter wavelengths in the ultraviolet range and so are not visible to human eye. These flavonoids may play a role in attracting insects such as bees which see the ultraviolet range of the spectrum in protecting plants from excessive UV radiation and flavones and flavonols secreted into the soil by legume roots also play a role in regulating gene expression in nodulating nitrogen fixing bacteria. The next are the isoflavonoids. The isoflavonoids are a group of flavonoids in which the B ring is attached at third carbon rather than the second carbon position and they are derived from a flavone intermediate called naringenin which is ubiquitously present in plants. Isoflavonoids are found mostly in leguminous plants with highest concentration occurring in soybean or glycine max. They have several different functions in plants including promoting the formation of nitrogen fixing nodules by symbiotic rhizobia, protection against reactive oxygen species and they also have insecticidal and antimicrobial activities and cause infertility in mammals. Next, let us take up tannins. Tannins are large phenolic compounds with molecular masses ranging from 600 to 3000 and are broadly grouped into two categories that is condensed tannins and hydrolyzable tannins. Condensed tannins are compounds usually formed by the linkage of flavonoid units and are also called proanthocyanidins as they can be hydrolyzed to anthocyanidins by treatment with strong acids. Condensed tannins are common phenolic polymer constituents of woody plants which have defensive properties in plants like lignin. On the other hand, hydrolyzable tannins are heterogeneous polymers containing phenolic acids, especially gallic acid and simple sugars. Hydrolyzable tannins are easily hydrolyzed with dilute acid and examples include gallotannins, elegatannins, etc. Generally, tannins act as toxin or feeding repellent to many herbivores as they cause a sharp, unpleasant, astringent sensation in the mouth due to their binding of salivary proteins. Plant tannins also protect plants from microorganisms and tannins like protocatechoic and chlorogenic acids have special function in disease resistance of certain plants. Next, let us take up the non-flavonoids. The main non-flavonoids include gallic acid. Gallic acid is a 6 carbon linked to 1 carbon phenolic acid which serves as the precursor of hydrolyzable tannins. Next are the hydroxycinamides. Hydroxycinamides include 6 carbon linked to 3 carbon hydroxycinamides and their conjugated derivatives synthesized through the phenylpropanoid pathway are collectively referred to as the phenylpropanoids. 
Common examples of hydroxycinamides are p cumeric caffeic and ferulic acids. Next are the stilbins. They include polyphenolic 6 carbon linked to 2 carbon and 6 carbon compounds produced by plants in response to attack by fungal, bacterial and viral pathogens, example resveratrol. Next let us take up the third group of secondary metabolites that includes the nitrogen and sulfur containing compounds. Let us start with the nitrogen containing secondary metabolites. The nitrogen containing secondary metabolites includes alkaloids, cyanogenic glucosides and other non-protein amino acids. They are mostly biosynthesized from common amino acids and play important roles in the anti herbivore defense and toxicity to humans. First let us take up alkaloids. Alkaloids are a large and structurally diverse group of nitrogen containing secondary metabolites found in plants. Alkaloids have a heterocyclic nitrogenous ring or ring system and a basic or alkaline character and they generally occur as salts example chlorides or sulfates and or as nitrogen oxides in the plants. The name of alkaloids commonly end in the suffix ine or in example in morphine, capsaicin etc. They are usually synthesized from the amino acids aspartic acid, lysine, tyrosine and tryptophan. Now let us take up cyanogenic glucosides. They constitute a group of nitrogen containing compounds that release poisonous substances like hydrogen cyanide and hydrogen sulfide when the plant is crushed and it deters feeding by insects and other herbivores. They are commonly present in members of graminae, rosaceae and leguminosae families. Example, amygdalin is a common cyanogenic glycoside found in the seeds of almonds, apricot, cherries and peaches while durin is found in sorghum bicolor. Next let us see the non-protein amino acids. The non-protein amino acids are unusual amino acids present in many plants that occur as free forms of amino acids and act as protective defensive substances. Example, cannabinin and acetidin 2 carboxylic acid. Next, let us take up the sulfur containing secondary metabolites. Sulfur containing secondary metabolites in plants include compounds such as glutathione or GSAs in short, glucosinolates or GSL, phytoalexins, thionins, defensins and lectins. Glutathione or GSAs it is a major organic sulfur compound of plants and glutathione plays important role in regulating plant growth and development, detoxification of heavy metals, detoxification of genobiotics and cytotoxins and as cellular antioxidant in stress responses. The next are the glucosinolates or GSL. They are a group of sulfur containing plant volatile glucosides produced in response to attack by predators, competitors and parasites by higher plants, example brassica. These are smelling volatiles when catalyzed by the plant enzyme myrosinase produce pungent and chemically reactive isothecyanates and nitrites that function in plant defense by acting as herbivore toxins and feeding repellents. Next, let us see about phytoalexins. Phytoalexins are sulfur containing compounds synthesis by plants in response to bacterial or fungal infection or other forms of stress. They include diverse forms in plants and appear to play a role in limiting the spread of pathogen which seems to be a common mechanism of resistance to pathogenic microbes in a wide range of plants. Some examples of phytoalexins are Veron, which is a furanoacetylenic derivative from Vixia fava, several forms of phagiolin in Phagiolus vulgaris, glyciolins in Glycine max, pistin in Pisum sativum pods, ipomeron in sweet potato, orchinol in orchid tubers, triforyrhizin in red clover, etc. Next are the defensins, thionins and lactins. These include sulfur-rich non-storage 
plant proteins which are synthesized and accumulated in plants in response to microbial attack and other stress conditions. They are highly toxic to microorganisms, insects and mammals and help in plant defense. Now coming to the conclusion. Thus, we have seen that a large number of plant phenolics and other nitrogen and sulfur containing compounds constitute a major amount of plant secondary metabolite compounds. These compounds also play important roles in plant including defense against herbivores and pathogens, mechanical support and in reducing the growth of nearby competing plants. Therefore, the secondary metabolites not only help the plant in defense but also increase the survivability and lifespan of the plant. Thank you.